Hi, my name is Mike Peterson, and I'm a solution specialist with Microdesk in the architecture and the media and entertainment departments. This is the second video in a three-part series on the installation procedures for AutoCAD 2012. And this video will talk about deployments. So we'll go into our main interface here and click on deployment. Now this does take a little bit longer, uh, typically about 30 seconds or so. Mine takes a little bit shorter because I already ran it in the background here, just so it will go smoothly. All of these options are typical of previous versions. We have our deployment names, our paths, different options for creating log files, whether we want to run in silent mode or not, and then our option for the platform. Because the download was a 64-bit download, that's the only option here. So I'll put in AutoCAD 2012. And then my image path, I can choose browse, which will point me to a network location. However, if I want to override this and type in a specific local path, I can do that as well. Just be aware that if you do that, some of the options files that are created with your deployment will need to be adjusted if you move the location of your deployment, because otherwise some of the linking to your deployment won't work quite right, because it won't know exactly where the actual path is. So we'll uncheck create these logs and possibly turn off some other options here and then go to next. We have our end user license agreement, which you obviously will accept without question. And then our licensing and product information page. I like how upfront and direct this is. It's great because you don't want to choose the wrong option because you can't change it after the fact, as some of you have found out. You'll need to do a full uninstall and reinstall. So make sure you choose standalone or network. Now, if you choose standalone, you'll need to have a correct serial number because once you try to activate your license, it will use whatever is typed in here to create that activation code. Now, in my case, I don't have a serial number and it will accept all ones. And I can even activate by calling Autodesk, getting an activation code with all ones. So I technically don't have to have the correct serial number, but it does make life a little bit harder when you're using a standalone. If you're running a network license, the serial number isn't really even used except to report what your serial number is, so it doesn't really matter as much. All ones will work in a pinch. However, always put in the correct one if you have it. Your product key, this one kind of stumps people sometimes. It is included with your software and you can find it on various forums and on various sites when you download the software from Subscription Center, for example. However, if you go into your installation folder, that you unzipped all of your files into, there's this mid.txt file. Now this file has your product key inside of it right here, but it doesn't even say product key, it says part number, and these first five digits, that's your product key, in this case, 001D1. Now this is, in, this is unique for each specific piece of software. However, it's not unique by license. So every single installation of AutoCAD 2012 ever will always have this product key, regardless of what your serial number is or what your contract is. So as long as you know this, you can always install AutoCAD 12. It's a different one for Inventor, a different one for Revit, a different one for every Autodesk software, but the product key is unique, specific to each piece of software. We then have our license server and we can choose one option here. Typically it's a single license server and I'll just type in localhost here and move forward. Now we have three options here. We have AutoCAD 2012, Design Review, and then AutoCAD Autodesk Inventor Fusion. AutoCAD 2012 has many options, most of which aren't really that different than previous versions. You have your installation type, custom or typical, where you can choose which files and which options to install. You also have different profile paths that you can set up ahead of time, different search files that you can set up as well, and then different additional files you want to install. There are also some options that you can set up for different kinds of publishing and uh, whether it requires Internet Explorer, etc. And then down here, which is great and was added in 2011, the inclusion of service packs. So if it finds one, it'll automatically install it. Then a few other options for which channels and which communication channels you want available. We'll close that. Design review, you'll always want to install, so we'll include that as well. And then we have Inventor Fusion. Now this is the ability for using the Inventor engine to model some of your 3D components from AutoCAD directly. So it's kind of a light, light version of Inventor that's included as well. I'll be doing a future video on that to go more in detail, but just know that it's a great feature if you're doing any kind of 3D modeling in AutoCAD. And that's our deployment. Hope that helped you out.